Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I'm going to be painting some of the toughest enemies in Hero Quest, the Chaos Warriors. And you may be thinking to yourself, they aren't that tough, I don't remember them being that difficult to deal with in Hero Quest. Well, wait until you bump into them in Advanced Hero Quest. These guys will wreck your day. These chaps are, of course, the half brothers of Slambo. How do I know they are the half brothers? Because they only have one axe. But they are very reminiscent of Slambo. And while I don't have an original Slambo miniature, I very much would like to have one, but I do not. I do have the reissue that Games Workshop made a few years ago. Here he is. And you can see that I have painted him in this metallic green armor, which I really, really like. So this is the color scheme that I am going to use for my Hero Quest Chaos Warriors. I think it gives them a sort of ethereal, possibly magically imbued look, or maybe they're just Nurgle chaps under all that metal. To start with, I have spray undercoated with Chaos Black, and now of course we're going to give a coat of Lead Belcher to these guys. We are going to make sure we get a good covering of Lead Belcher, and that does mean two coats. And we don't need to be fussy at this point, we can pretty much cover everything. I'm using a big brush to get this done quickly. The boots and one of the gauntlets won't actually be metal, but it doesn't matter if the metal paint goes over it at this point. We can deal with that later on. So I'm just making sure I get into all of the cracks and creases of this armor. This miniature is quite bulky, but it has lots of little um, recesses that you need to make sure the paint gets into. We're going to use a lazy way of painting this green armor, and it does require a good solid coat of silver first. With the lead belcher applied, we're now switching to Stormhost Silver, and we're going to do a dry brush here, which is where you put some paint on the brush, wipe almost all of it back off onto a tissue, and then lightly whip the bristles of the brush across the miniature, and the paint will hit just the most raised parts of the miniature, giving it a highlight on those raised parts. And we're going to go quite heavy with this dry brush, because we do want to make sure that all of those raised details are nice and bright. And again, I'm using a big brush for this to get it done as quickly as possible, and because I don't need to be fussy. Now I'm switching to Army Painter Green Tone. You can probably do this with um, a Phonian camo shade, but I'm doing it with this green ink, which I've used in the past, and it gets good results. Plus, it's in a dropper bottle, so I can just drop it straight onto the miniature. And what you can see here is I'm just going to work that into all of those metal details, and we will start to give those silver areas a nice green tinge. You will probably need several coats of this ink, but we don't want it to pull too much in those details and get really, really dark there. And that's what he looks like with one coat of ink applied. It's quite an interesting look, but I want a really green look. I want a very strong emerald green. So I'm going to apply a second coat of the ink. Doing the same thing again, I'm just dropping it directly onto the miniature and then using a brush to pull it out across the miniature, make sure it covers all of those metal areas and doesn't pull too much in the recesses. And you can see that as the second coat goes on, it really starts to take on a much stronger green. And that's what we have after two coats, and I'm still not happy with that, but feel free to stop whenever you are. I'm doing a third coat. Three is the magic number for me. And of course, again, I'm doing exactly the same thing. Another reason to use Army Painter ink rather than Athonian Camo Shade is because you will use a lot of it, especially if you're painting a large quantity of these miniatures. So Army Painter's a bit cheaper. So you save a few pennies. And there we go, I'm happy with that. Before we move on to non-metallic things, we will need to replace our water because it may have some metal flakes in there from the metallic paint. So before we do that, we'll do any other metal areas on the miniature. That means it is back to lead belcher and we're going to reapply lead belcher to the head of the ax, just in case we got any green ink on there. And we're also going to paint the little ball that's between the horns on the helmet. And then there are some areas of chain mail on this miniature as well on the front and the back. So we are going to touch that in. Try to be really careful here. If you do get any paint on the green areas, it's a bit of a pain to sort out because you have to reapply those layers of ink wash again. So try to be extra careful here and not slosh the paint around too much. 
And then we're going to use some Balthazar gold to pick out some little details, the two circles on the front of the miniature. I'm not really sure what they're called, they hang off of the pauldrons, I assume they are there to stop um, thin blades from sliding in between the pauldron and the chest plate. They probably have a specific a medieval term, but I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to say the little discs on the front. Both of those will get a coat of Balthazar gold. We're now getting out the Null Oil Shade, and we're going to apply this to all of the silver metal, all of the lead belcher. So that's the chainmail pieces, which will nicely bring out all of those chain link details. We're also going to apply Null Oil to the head of the axe. And that little ball on the top of the helmet. We're not going to put Null Oil on the gold areas. We will deal with that later using Agrax Earthshade. Yes, of course, there will be Agrax Earthshade later. At this point, we need to refresh our paint water because we're done with metallics, and we're going to do the brown areas, starting with Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this on the boots, on the gauntlet, and on the shaft of the axe. You don't have to use Mornfang Brown. You could maybe do this with black, or several different tones of brown, or a lighter brown, a darker brown, whatever you fancy, it doesn't really matter, but I have used Mornfang brown, which is quite a nice, rich brown colour, and when it's got some wash on it, it looks suitably grungy. We're using Dawnstone as well, and we're going to put that on the wrap on the shaft of the axe, to look like it's got like a leather strap on it. And at all times here, we just need to be careful not to hit any of those green armor areas, because as I mentioned before, it is a pain to put those right if you slip. We're now switching to Xandri Dust, and we're going to apply a coat of Xandri Dust to the horns on the helmet. You may need two coats. But the aim here is to get a nice, smooth finish on the Xandri Dust. In preparation for yet more washes, this miniature is 90% washes. We're now going to give the horns a coat of Seraphim Sepia. This is going to give it a more bone or horn-like appearance. Obviously there's not really any details to bring out in the horn, but it just gives it a slightly different coloration which has a more natural appearance. We're then switching to Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're going to put this on the horns as well, starting at the base and working about halfway up to give a transition from a darker base up to a lighter part of the horn at the top. Now it's time for Agrax Earthshade, and Agrax Earthshade is going to go over all of the brown areas, so it's going to go on the gauntlet, it's going to go on the boots, it's going to go on the shaft of the axe and all over the leather strapping as well. It's going to go over those little gold circles on the front of the armor to bring out the details in those. And it is also going to be dabbed lightly around the base of the horns on the helmet just to give a final gradation of color and help to blend it and transition into the actual metal of the helmet itself. And really these washes are doing most of the work for you here. And I think it's a pretty decent result for not a huge amount of effort. And in fact, I'm leaving it there. All that needs to be done, of course, is it will need to have the flagstone painting added to the base, which I have shown in another video, which you can find in my Hero Quest playlist. And then it will get a coat of varnish, and we are good to go. Another set of miniatures painted for my Hero Quest restoration project. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.